thanks to everyone who's joined us um, either on Zoom or on Facebook. Um, I'm Leah, I'm from the London Environmental Network and I'll be facilitating this evening. Um, first, I just wanted to share, uh, if you're interested in learning more about DJ Kevin Evans, you can check out his website linked here, also in the chat. Um, and now I will pass it off to Joanna Kerr of the London Public Library for welcome and land acknowledgement. Thanks, Leah. Uh, so good evening and welcome. My name is Joanna. As Leah said, I'm a librarian at London Central Library. One of the books I'd like to mention this evening in relation to our theme is On Time and Water. The author of this book is an Icelandic writer and documentary filmmaker. He says that in order to bring about a global shift, we need new ways to see and imagine ourselves into the future. This book was published this year. Holds can be placed on the copies the library has already ordered. Before starting our program tonight, we would like to take this time together to acknowledge that we in London, Ontario are speaking to you from the traditional lands of the Anishinaabek, Haudenosaunee, Huron-Wendat, Lunapayak, and neutral peoples. This land is covered by several treaties, including Treaty 6, the London Township Treaty of 1796. We acknowledge historical and ongoing injustices that Indigenous peoples endure in Canada. We are grateful for the opportunity to meet here, and we thank the generations of peoples who have taken care of this land. Together and going forward, may we all recognize our own responsibility in the stewardship of this land. If you would like to learn more about Treaty 6, uh, the library holds materials on this and other treaties. We'd also like to take the opportunity today to highlight upcoming events organized by the London Black History Coordinating Committee. These include the Lewis Corey Award, recognizing youth from the African, Caribbean, and Black communities, as well as the closing celebration for Black History Month on February 27th. The theme this year is celebrating the strength and resilience of the Black community in Southwestern Ontario. And running all month at the library, pick up a Kente Cloth Art Kit for children at any library branch in London. And until March 7th, join the online adult reading challenge, Celebrate Black Voices. Find details on the library's website and other events on the Eventbrite link on the slide. Thanks so much, and I'll turn it back to you, Leah. Thanks, Joanna. Um, so we'll get started with tonight's uh, presentations. Uh, first, we're going to hear from Katie Harper, former director of Project Neutral, uh, about their award-winning carbon footprint calculator. Uh, you'll be able to follow along with Katie in real time and learn about why measuring your climate impact is so important for climate action. Then we'll hand it off to Sarah, the digital community engagement specialist from London Environmental Network. Um, at that point, we'll pause for some Q&A, uh, so please throughout uh, the session, please uh, put your questions either in the question box on Zoom or if you're watching on Facebook in the comments and we'll try and get through as many as we can. Um, and then we'll dive into exploring the City of London's Climate Emergency Action Plan. So we have a short video to share and then we will hear from Jamie Skimming the manager of community energy initiatives from the city of London um, and learn about the e-democracy uh, climate simulation tool and how that will be used. And then we'll end with a Q&A and some wrap up points. Um, and I just wanted to mention too that we'll be sharing lots of links in the chat uh, throughout the session. Um, but just a reminder that this event will be recorded and all those who registered will receive a lot of the, all of these links in a follow-up email. Um, and we're also streaming live on Facebook, so we'll put those links on Facebook. Um, and thanks for hanging out with us tonight. So I'm going to pass it off to Katie of Project Neutral to begin her presentation. Thank you so much. So nice to be here with you guys today. Uh, yeah, I really appreciate the invitation and uh, yeah, I'm excited to, to chat with folks. Okay. Katie, sorry to interrupt. Your uh, your sounds a little scratchy. I don't know if it's your headphones. Um, I think it's coming from. Thank you for letting me know. Is it? It's 
I do that, is that better? Um, I'm still getting some, some feedback. Mm. It's working when we tested it, still, wasn't it? Let me just change, I just changed the microphone. So oh, I, that's much better. Better, okay, great. Well, we'll just toss those away and- <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, no, I'm glad, thank you for letting me know, that's great. Um, I'm gonna just jump in and share my screen, hold on. So I'm gonna share this presentation and then in a little, in a minute, we're gonna go to the Project Neutral website. So let me start by sharing that. Can you see the Project Neutral screen, or the, uh, the, the slide presentation? There? Yes, yeah. Awesome, okay. Um, great, well, let me jump right in. Um, uh, where to start? I'm, I'm so excited to be here. I grew up in London and so I'm, uh, although I'm not living in London right now, I love the fact that Project Neutral has been working with the City of London for a long time. And it's just, uh, it's, it's been a wonderful partnership and it's really fun to get to chat with folks in London. So thank you. Um, I, Project Neutral has a tool that really helps people understand their climate impacts. We really, we wanna make sure people take this thing that's invisible and make it visible, make it something that we can all understand. I don't think that I need to explain to folks on the call that we're in a climate emergency right now and we need to get cracking. We need to go so much faster than we have been. Um, in fact, we have less than 10 years to reduce our emissions by roughly half and then fully phase out fossil fuels uh, and another 20 years after that. So we really have to be ratcheting down the, the global emissions that uh, we have. However, this is what Canada's performance has looked like over the last little while. This isn't good enough. Now, there's lots of really good things that are happening um, and, and really big strides are being made, but clearly this is going in the wrong direction. And it sort of begs the question, like, well, if, if we know this is a crisis, why, why are we, you know, why aren't things going as fast as they should? So I think that you know, many people will talk about climate, um, a wicked problem, um, one of these complex, uh, complex issues that takes a lot to solve. And that's true. And yet there's one piece that really, I think, is at the heart of this. And that's that the impacts are not visible to us, at least not initially. Um, both in terms of, you know, if, if we think about the, the kind of impacts that we can have, the things that we do, we don't actually get to tangibly understand when we make our daily choices, how it has an impact on the environment. And partly that's that there's impacts that are way upstream, you know, at, at the oil refineries or making the fertilizers to grow the food um, or in factories far, you know, halfway around the world. Um, but part of it is also that even where we have direct emissions, like in the tailpipe in our cars or when we burn national gas, natural. Nat natural gas, stumbling on that, natural gas to, uh, to heat our homes. We just don't see it, it's invisible. So our, our mission is to try to reverse this. And we sort of did a little thought experiment. Well, well what would happen if you could actually see the carbon? Um, uh, you know, my family produces a little bit more than about a ton a month. Um, and that's low compared to most, uh, many other households, but not low compared to other households around the world. Um, but if we were actually to like live with that, like what would that do? Um, and so one way of thinking about it is to imagine, well, what if this was a block of graphite, like an actual chunk, a 600 pound, in this case, block of graphite. Or if we broke it up day by day, imagine all of us carried around a 20 pound block of graphite that we had to like haul to the garbage every day at the end of the day. I think that would really change our relationship with carbon. If it looks like this, if the, the food in the shopping, uh, you know, in the grocery store was all covered in a little bit of soot and airplanes flying overhead were dropping it on us. You know, we probably, if things were visible, we probably wouldn't be far behind in, uh, in taking a lot of action. Um, and that's actually what Project Neutral has been trying to do for about the last 10 years, is really helping under pe people understand their impacts so that they can be empowered to make changes and, and figure out what's important to them and prioritize their actions. Um, so yeah, we started out in, um, uh, in neighborhoods with people kind of gathering around in backyards, sharing their, their, um, their energy bills and trying to compare notes and try to figure out where, where 
they could have an, an impact. And then we realized very quickly that um, it's not easy for most people to calculate this. And it's really hard to translate the energy used in your house and the gasoline used in your car and all of those things. It's hard to put them into one unified um, thing. So we designed a carbon calculator basically to make it really, really simple um, and intuitive for people. So Project Neutral's tool, you can see a snapshot on the screen of uh, what the, the individual dashboard looks like. But it gives you this idea that um, it, it helps you understand what your impact is. And we've done it in a way that's like super simple. Um, in, and we've taken all the math and, and calculations in the background um, so that people can just use it, um, you know, use it here. And, and obviously with the goal that it eventually is, 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 is ultimately around promoting action. So I'm going to take everyone through this today. Um, and we're going to load that up on projectneutral.org and you can, you can follow along or do it yourself at home. But just to give an overview of what we're going to look at, um, we're going to go through the, the getting started calculator, which has some simple questions. Then we'll have our, we'll be able to see our personalized results. And then we'll jump over and to look at these action cards that really help people understand where can you go from here. Um, so, uh, oh, and I just wanted to say like, People have been doing this all across Ontario now for several years, and we collectively have measured over 115,000 tons of CO2, um, which is like a one of these graphite blocks that's like 24 meters high. Uh, but it's you know there's something that's very powerful about all of these households coming together and understanding maybe for the first time what their actual household impact is, but. We know there's a lot more that we haven't yet measured. Um, and that's because 45% of the emissions in Canada are indirectly associated with the choices that you and I make every single day. So um, we, you know, whether that be the thinking about our food choices or our transportation choices or, or the way we heat and, and cool our home, it's something that we all need to be thinking about. Um, and Project Neutral's tools are here to, to help with that. So, um, we are going to dive in to the uh, to to measure this. We'll, I'll do a little demo, and people can follow along at home. But I thought just before we did, we did that, I was hoping in the chat if you wanted to take a guess. We're going to look at these five categories: home energy, daily transportation, travel, food, and waste. And where do you think when you think about your own your own family? Where do you think the biggest impacts are, and where do you think the lowest impacts are? And we would love it if. Uh, some folks would throw their uh, their guesses into uh, into the chat, and you know, as I'm saying that, I also want to be really, you know, it's always important to take the time to mention that for some people, it makes them a little bit nervous to start measuring their climate impact, partly because it might be something that they've never done before, or um, they just, you know, there's sometimes a sense of I should be doing more, or gosh, I don't want to look at this, um, and we would just encourage you to that. Looking is really important. Understanding where we're starting from is a really important thing to do. And also that there's no shame in wherever you're starting from. We all, the world that we live in was not designed with climate change in mind. We didn't know about these things when, when people started to, started you know, building the infrastructure that we have. We know now and we have to shift the way that we're doing things, but uh, wherever you're starting from, don't feel worried about it. Um, the most important thing is to like face it and uh, and then get started. So, we'd love to hear throw your throw your guesses in the chat. Um, while that's happening, I'm going to shift over to another tab here. Um, maybe Leah, do you want to just double confirm that you can see the yes uh, thing? Yeah, I can see your screen. So if you are at home and you want to, to do this yourself, that's great. Grab your laptop, um, open up a new tab and we can do it at the same time. It'd be fun to like see, compare results. Um, and uh, if you're on your phone, it's a bit trickier and you can, you can do it later. But for those of you who want to go along with us, um, just type in projectneutral.org. It will take you to the app, projectneutral.org. Um, the, um, uh, the, the link has already been in the chat there. So that's great, thank you. And so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna click on that getting started button. And the first thing that we do is make an account. So 
Uh, the reason we ask you to do this is so that you can come back and see your results afterwards. Um, and as I'll show you, there's, there's the first getting started module, but then you can actually go much deeper and refine your results. So uh, you'll want to be able to, to log back in afterwards. So I'm going to type, um, I'm going to make a, uh, I'm going to call it Katie Harper test because this is a test, um, a test account. So this one is going to be uh, at Dot, call it test.org. Um, and I'm going to do, when you're doing your password, it needs to be eight characters or longer. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, we love people to encourage, you know, we love to encourage you to, to sign up for our newsletter um, because this is just a test account. I'm not going to, but just know that we don't spam folks. It's like, maybe four times a year that uh, that something comes out. So don't, uh, don't let that, uh, that uh, worry you. So um, when you get in, I'm gonna go a little bit more slowly just so that folks can, can uh, follow along, but it will actually take about three minutes if you're doing this on your own. Um, and we just answer a simple, a series of really simple questions and then we see our results. So I'm gonna put London and I'm up in Old North, so I'll put that in there. Um, and since my parents still live there, I better invent and not actually their postal code. Um, but I'm gonna do this for my house. So uh, we ask questions about the household, how many people live in the home, because that um, there's, we're gonna use that in the calculations to figure out um, the food impacts and so on. So some things get multiplied by the number of users. So that's why we ask. Uh, this. And then we talk a little bit about the house and we know that an old house, an old large house tends to use a lot more energy than a newer um, or a newer, newer home or newer apartment or something. So um, using these really simple questions, we can get an estimate of where your predicted energy use is. And then later on, if you've done maybe some amazing work uh, retrofitting your home, that will, you, we can account for that in some of the deep dive modules. So when we ask about uh, transportation, we're looking at all the different ways that you get around. Um, and in my family, we do all of the above, although less public transit, I guess, these days, uh, since we're not moving around so much. Um, but I'm going to put in um, a, just a, uh, some, some quick estimates of how much we drive during the week. So we leave our car at home most days, but I'm going to say on average, it's maybe like 15 minutes a day spread out over a couple of days. And then maybe on the weekend, we'll go a little bit further and go for a hike or something. So maybe I'll say we put it, we do 120 minutes. So that's two hours for the, over the whole weekend. Um, and we have a hybrid. Um, so that reduces some of our impact there. So whatever kind of vehicle you have, you can um, plug that in for this estimate. Um, and thankfully, no one has traveled in the last 12 months. I mean, thankfully, because of the climate impacts, I know <laughs> these are interesting times. Um, when we get to food, I am an omnivore in the sense that we, while we're trying to be more vegetarian and do more plant-based meals, we still eat meat occasionally. Um, and we ask about throwing out food, uh, because actually food, food waste is a huge contributor to climate impact. And so giving, getting just like a sense of that is, uh, is helpful. And yes, we compost in, uh, in our family. So that makes a big difference by to keeping um, methane from being released from organics and landfill. Um, I wheel a bin to, for waste, I wheel a bin to uh, the curb and we have a small bin. Um, most folks in London here will put the six day collection schedule. And I'm pretty sure we have almost everyone um, who is able to uh, recycle, although there are some apartment buildings I know that where they're still working. Um, now the very, the, I think we got two more, uh, two more to go through before we get our results. Um, this is a question about giving, uh, sharing contact info with the city of London and, and we encourage you to do that again. You can ask Jamie, who's going to speak next to uh, what, uh, if you have any questions um, about it, but it's, it's not a lot of emails, but it might allow you to find out about things like the e-democracy um, uh, portal that, uh, that Jamie's going to talk about in a minute. Because this is a test account, I'm going to put no, just not to muddy the, um, the, uh, the lists. Um, and same thing, I'll put no here, but this is a um, researchers at the University of Waterloo are looking at engagement and climate action and stuff. So 
if you're able to share your data, it's all anonymized. Um, but um, this PhD student there is doing some cool work. So if you would like to share your anonymized data, we encourage you to. Um, okay, almost there. We, it's great for us to understand where people are coming from. So uh, I'm putting at an event and sit using GITC, and that will be relevant because later on we're going to talk about um, code, a group code to join for some prizes. So um, uh, in fact, I'll put GITC, Green in the City 001, because that's going to be your code that you're going to want later on if you want to, to uh, register for any prizes. So here is my, here are my results. Um, based on this, my family's carbon score is about 16, or just under 17 uh, uh, um, tons of CO2. And if you think about that, you, or you can visualize that as about being like 17 buses worth. So that's a lot. Um, now, well, I'll come back to that in a minute. As you can see, what, what we get here is the score, your own score compared to average households of the same size. So in my case, it's two adults and two kids. Um, and it also shows the top performers uh, within, within that group. And then, and so these are the benchmark down below, but it gets a little bit more interesting when we look at where is the breakdown? So, um, and I was asking to, you know, asking you to think about where your own impacts were. Many people are surprised to see that their food emissions are higher than they expected. Um, obviously home energy is a big one. And for people who fly a lot, travel can be a big one, but food is often um, a really big place. And um, uh, so, so that's always interesting to see. And in this case, I've got my emissions are, are um, estimated to be higher than average um, in there. Now, further down below, um, you can see that there's a number of different ways. So I talked a little bit about, you know, you saw that we went through that very quickly and this is just an estimate, of course, but if you wanted to get really granular, you could put things like the make model and year of your car and how many kilometers you drive. Um, you could throw that into the daily transportation module and refine your data from there. Um, you can put in your actual London hydro bills um, and, and other things in the home energy module. So you can get really granular and that will help refine your results. And so when I do that, my family's uh, carbon footprint actually goes down a little bit, um, which is, so it makes it a little bit more accurate. Um, and then I just wanna draw your attention to these take action cards. Um, this is really around helping you think about what, what you can do. So let me just scroll up for a second. Um, one of the things we want people to look at when they, when they get their results is to think about two things. One, where are your biggest areas of impact? And then two, what is the easiest thing for you to tackle? Because it's a great idea to start with something that's manageable. Um, and for a lot of people, food uh, fits in that category. Um, but uh, there's, we have all kinds of ideas. Um, uh, these were, these came out, were, excuse me, these were come up with, and it's not what I meant to say, but uh, these were, were um, developed by, by folks at York University and then some other ones um, here in London as well. And uh, so these give you ideas of things that you can do. So if, for example, you wanna say, I will install a smart thermostat or I will, um, switch to a, a heat pump when I do a renovation, um, you can put those things and uh, you can click on those action cards. And then you, and I, there's obviously for all the different categories. When you go to the top, you'll notice there's three tabs, your impact, your action tab, and then your community tab. When we go to our action journal, then we'll be able to see that the ones that we clicked on a minute ago, these are now in um, here as a work in progress. and um, so that you can see you're, you're making an improvement, you can actually click on more info and say, oh, I've completed that. I have a, a smart thermostat. This shows up as like something that I've already done. And a heat pump, well, we're gonna do a renovation on our house. And I'm thinking that we'll put a heat pump in, uh, in an addition that we're renovating. So that's for me as a work in progress. And then down below are all of the other available action cards that you can build out. Um, Sarah's going to talk a little bit more about the London specific action cards, but I'll just flag that you'll see there's Skylar and, uh, and some of the folks from Len uh, right here. Um, but all the ones that are developed specifically for London are tagged with a little London tag, so that makes it easy. Okay, the very last thing that I want to show you is that you can go to your community and that's where you can join a group. So 
if you want to be entered into the draw that um, friends of the city are putting together, you can enter the code GITC, Green in the City 001, join the group, and then you'll see the Green in the City webinar group. And if you go to the group dashboard, you can see, okay, there's nine people who have done that. Um, uh, so far, here's the average emissions. Um, I'm tracking, my family's tracking kind of similar, although the food is a little bit higher. And then some of these folks are folks that have already done some of the deep dive modules. So they'll say like five out of the nine people have done the deep dive home energy survey um, and so on. So this is a neat tool that you can use with your group, uh, you know, here today to, to be entered for prizes, but also if you want to use this in a school or a workplace or your community group, there's lots of really cool ways that people are using these uh, group reports. And so if you want to, uh, to hear about that, I'm going to just type my colleague, Jake, uh, Jake at projectneutral.org. There is his email address going into the chat. If you want to, you know, use one of these groups, please get in touch with Jake and uh, um, yeah, we'll get you set up. So thank you so much. I'm going to pass it over, pass it back. And um, I think Sarah's going to tell you more about the London Action Cards and other things. Hey guys, I'm Sarah. Um, I'm just going to share my screen in a second. Um, so to introduce myself again, uh, I'm the Community Engagement Specialist with the London Environmental Network. And if you're not too familiar with us, uh, we're an environmental nonprofit. Um, that aims to cultivate a more sustainable and healthier city. Um, so some of you may be wondering after you get your results from Project Neutral, what can you do to reduce your footprint specifically in London? So that's why we created these uh, London Project Act Action Neutral cards. Um, so I'll go and share my results with you. Um, so my carbon score was uh, 12.6, which is a little bit lower than, uh, than the average. But um, if you scroll down to the action cards, we tried to uh, create cards for uh, every category and they'll just have this little um, London tag on them. Uh, but as an example, I'll just go back to my emissions and show you um, based on what I would do, because my daily transportation is kind of high. So at that point, I would say, how do I reduce that in London? Um, so you could go down to the daily transportation emissions section here and say, uh, you're interested in uh, committing to walking or cycling if your destination is less than five kilometers. Um, and what's cool about these cards is that they have a lot of information kind of like tailored to London. Um, so there's a brief description here, including some of the benefits of walking and cycling, including uh, reducing the risk of premature mortality, cancer, cardiovascular disease, diabetes. Um, all of these have references, by the way. Um, and then there's, uh, for example, here, a blog post that we've linked, written by Dan. Um, who chose to live car free, just in case you're looking for a little inspiration. And then there's also some very London specific uh, resources on a lot of the cards. So here we included some cycling tips such as using the TVP, which is this great uh, pathway along the Thames River that goes um, all throughout London. Um, and this is just a great pathway to use if you're like me and you're afraid to bike on the road. But um, it was really nice. I used it this summer, actually, uh, when I was biking to my job at Urban Roots. And it was such a beautiful commute. And it was much better than sitting in traffic. So I highly recommend it if you haven't checked it out before. Um, there's also some walking tips here that are London specific. So for example, uh, we've linked a London walking group that you can join um, and then make some new friends as well. Um, so as K 
Katie mentioned, if you are interested in taking this action, um, you just click take actions and it gets added to your journal. Um, yeah, so we have a lot of London specific cards, at least uh, one or two in each um, category. So if you wanna check those out. Um, but if you are kind of looking to get involved in the community as well, um, I would recommend going on our website to check out our volunteer opportunities, uh, which I'll do right now. Um, you can reach our website by going to www.lindenenvironment.net. And I just happen to have it open over here. Um, but if you go to our volunteer opportunities, uh, you can see here all of the ones that are currently available. So even though it's winter, there are quite a few options um, that you do have. Uh, just as an example, um, I'm going to click London, London Cycle Link because I really do enjoy biking. Um, so if you click on any of the volunteer um, tags or whatever, you can you get a description of the organization and then um, a, the volunteer opportunities that are available with them. And it's really nice because a lot of the organizations have um, a, many different uh, positions available. So say you like um, kind of doing like event support and you like being social, there's gonna be something there or, or you like working with your hands. Um, here you can, uh, fix bikes or um, be an ambassador or a bicycle valet. So there's really um, like diverse positions. So it'll be, I believe it will be fairly easy to find something that you uh, could be interested in. Um, and then under each page, we have a link to apply to the volunteer position. Um, if you don't find something on that, volunteer page. Uh, another thing you could do is go to our member directory. So we're an, um, pretty much an umbrella organization. So we help support 48 environmental organizations in the London area and they're all, um, it can be found on this page. So if you don't find anything on that volunteer opportunities page, um, you can head over here and uh, kind of check out all the categories. So um, if you're interested in pollination and beekeeping, there's something there, but uh, we have tons of categories to choose from. So I really uh, believe that finding an opportunity will, uh, will be doable. Um, another thing I wanted to mention is if you wanted to um, attend any events, a lot of them are virtual right now. We also have a really awesome events calendar um that has all the events in the london area but since a lot of things a lot of events are webinars right now we have kind of expanded our range so if you um click an event here uh, you'll have the title and then the um the date and the time and then the location which is usually online these days but hopefully soon we'll be able to see each other um, and then there's also a link to sign up for the event. So if you're ever bored, um, there's lots of events that are always happening. Um, just check out our events calendar to find them. And I'll go back to our slides. I did wanna mention um, if you're looking for more London specific information, we also have a podcast that we just launched um, and it's a series that looks at London's environmental and ecological health and asks just how green and resilient Forest City is. So each episode covers uh, one topic and our host Molly talks to local experts to gauge London's level of success in its pursuit of resiliency and a green future. Uh, so if you're interested in that, you can actually find it on our website as well. Um, and then last thing, if you want to stay connected with us to learn more about our upcoming volunteer opportunities or new events or anything like that, um, the best way to do that is to either follow us on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. Um, and we also have LinkedIn. Uh, or you could sign up for our newsletter. 
Um, that way you could uh, keep up with all the updates. So uh, that's it for me. We'll start the Q&A session. Awesome, thanks, Sarah. That was great. And also thank you, um, Katie, for your presentation too. Um, so we did get one question um, and uh, this question kind of asks about um, how the carbon uh, project neutral carbon calculator has taken the recent changes of the pandemic into the uh, into account. Um, so they gave an example saying that their family is traveling less due to the pandemic, but they're nervous to take the city bus. Um, and since so because of that, they've had to use uh, their car more as a result. So, you know, this calendar year isn't really a, a typical year. Um, so just wondering how the, the calculator uh, takes that into account. Yeah, that's a great question. I think a lot of people are wondering similar things um uh just because obviously this is not uh not not a normal year in any uh in any sense um what we would recommend i mean there's different ways that you can approach it but what we would recommend would be to uh use this as an opportunity to kind of uh toggle around with like well, what is our what is it what are our carbon emissions in a normal year and what are our carbon emissions this year and it's actually an interesting opportunity to uh, to see where the where the difference is. So one thing you could do would be to you do it for the last twelve months um, to get sort of an accurate representation of what this COVID year um, impact is, um, and then go back and play around with uh, with your results and and do it for the previous twelve months. Like if you've got your energy bills um, for the previous twelve months, one of the things we notice for folks is a lot of people are using more energy because they're home during the day, whereas they might have been away, and so. Um, that's changing certainly the time of use and, and, and the home energy demand in general. Um, yeah, so it's a it's a chance for you to experiment and and the tool the project neutral calculator is really a learning tool and so we're uh, we're happy to have people sort of use it as a chance to discover where they have impacts and where if they changed a few things they could uh, they could they could modify things. And the last thing I'll say is we are working at some point, um, although timelines for these things are all, you know, with COVID things are a bit different, but um, it's our hope to be able to launch something around um, that can measure your change over time. So that would be a feature that we'd be really excited about. And then you'd be able to look at like last year versus this year. Um, but for now, you can kind of just play around. Awesome. Thanks for answering that question. That was great. Um, I think Oh yes, and they they also said thank you uh, for answering the question. Awesome. Um, so I think what we'll do uh, is I will share the climate action, uh, climate emergency action plan video at this point, um, and maybe we'll get to more questions at the end if there's some time. Um, we did start a couple minutes late, so um, apologies for that, but we're going to keep moving along. Um, I will share uh, my screen here and I'm going to play a video um, about London's Climate Emergency Action Plan. After that, I'll invite Jamie to queue up uh, his presentation. Um, so let's see, hoping you can all see this here. Um, and if you can't hear the sound for whatever reason, someone please interrupt me <laughs> and, and we'll try and uh, figure that out. Remember me? I told you all about how we're reducing greenhouse gas emissions and the great progress we made with the Community Energy Action Plan, the CEAP for short skis. More on that in a minute. But for now, here's a quick little update on our ongoing community challenge to beat back those pesky carbon emissions. See you after the future presentation in the lobby for even more exciting news.
In case you aren't a math whiz with a magical memory for numbers, our 2019 annual carbon emissions were 380,000 tons lower than our baseline year of 1990. While it's definitely good news, we have a long way to go. Between flooding, super hot summers, and blizzardy winters, climate change is definitely a real problem for all of us, and we need to tackle our greenhouse gas emissions faster than a Western Mustang's linebacker. Ooh, my Achilles! That's why we've decided to rename the CEAP to, drumroll please, the CEAP, which now stands for the Climate Emergency Action Plan. Same great letters, same great taste, brand new mission. So let's keep giving her that London spirit, because climate change affects all of us. You, me, grandma, even the parakeet. Okay, so hopefully that kind of sets, uh, gets the ball rolling for Jamie's presentation. Um, Jamie, have about 10 minutes um, and then we'll get to some questions at the end. Okay, uh, well, thanks, Leah. Uh, and was, well, it was actually a great intro of running the video before this presentation because it, it really sets the stage for what the uh, London's Climate uh, Action Plan Simulator is all about. So I'm going to, where is that share button? Down here. I'm going to go here. And then I have to find the website. Okay. So can everyone see the how to participate page here? Yes. Okay, great. So um, essentially uh, what we're trying to do here with this tool is we're trying to basically kind of walk Londoners through kind of the, uh, the, the same kind of thinking process that we're gonna be doing here at the city, which is trying to figure out, you know, we're at 3 million tons today. We have to get down to zero in 2050, that's 30 years away. So essentially, uh, if we're to meet this target in the next 10 years, we're gonna have to reduce our emissions by at least one third, which is 1 million tons, which is, you know, a big number. So one of the things we wanted to also stress when we go through a tool like this is that we at the city, we only have direct control over about 5% of all the emissions uh, in London. That's like the city fleet, like our waste collection trucks or buildings. 95% of all the emissions from London are in the hands of Londoners and London businesses. So that's where this climate action plan simulator comes into play. So this tool is an online tool uh, which is great for especially uh, these time these days when we're doing everything online. And it was developed by a group called eDemocracy Solutions using this group decision making algorithm, which they call Othello, which has been designed to analyze and summarize the inputs from hundreds and hundreds of people to try to get a sense of uh, basically what things have consensus and what things might have more division. So for this tool here, we really have two main goals in mind. First of all, we want help identifying those climate actions that have, you know, some good solid widespread support from, from Londoners, which will help us as we start to basically pull together what's going to be into our climate emergency action plan. But the second goal is we also want to help Londoners get an understanding of the level of effort that's going to be needed for to meet these goals. So, okay, I'm going to start off quickly with the tour here. Uh, so the how to participate page actually has this handy little four minute video, which um, if you're doing this tool afterwards, you can watch it at your leisure. Uh, ben from eDemocracy does a great job going through the whole process, but I'm not going to touch on that. Scrolling down then, you will see the option of signing in or not. Much like with Project Neutral, if you sign in, it allows you to save your work and come back later. Uh, also, if you want to be eligible for the the portion of the prize draw that's going to be attached to using the simulator. The only way we can pick your name is we actually have your name in the sign in area. So like I say, if you want to enter, if you do want to enter your name in for the prize draw, you have to sign in. But otherwise, if you just want to proceed as a guest, that's fine too. You can basically, you can do it when you want. The other thing to keep in mind too, is even if you do sign in, there's no way that we can attribute any answers to to the sign-in process, so I'll have no idea. For example, if my coworker Pat, what his uh, what his answers are in his tool, all I'll know is that Pat has signed in, but I have no idea as what his answers are. All right, so let's quickly get started here. So I'm going to jump down here. So when we look down at uh, we look down over here, there's four topics: waste aversion, 
building retrofits, growth, and transportation. And I'm going to start off with waste because everyone loves to talk about waste. So when you go into the tool, the first thing you'll see is it's going to have a bit of background information. Then there's going to be essentially a survey question. And the reason why we ask questions like this in front of each of these four sections is we want to get an idea of kind of where you're coming from. What's your starting point? Uh, so for example, if someone here basically says they recycle all the time or they compost all the time, we get an idea of sort of all the people who are good recyclers and composters, you know, we can do some analysis to get a sense of how they've answered versus to other people who never recycle. So it just helps us to understand our audience a bit more. But I won't jump through that here. Um, so the next thing when you move to the next section after you would fill out the survey is you would get to this question here. And specifically what we're focusing in on here is on organics composting. There's going to be a little bit of background info, info here if you want to understand more what the city's waste diversion action plans are and uh, information about green bin, there's handy links. But really the, the, the core of this tool is all about um, these, these sliders here. So you'll be posed with a question and here you'll see something that's like, in this case, how many households in London across the whole city do you think will make use of the green bin? And it's all the questions here generally use a scale of zero to 100%. So if you, let's say, oh, let's say it's about half, you will see, for example, okay, well, if half the households use a green bin, we estimate about 7,000 tons of emission reductions. And this other thing, which is unique to this tool is this idea of a, of a difficulty score, which is a kind of a qualitative one to 10 score, one super easy, 10 very difficult. So this kind of gives you a rough feel for you know how difficult certain levels of action are. So in the case of a score of five, you know eh, that's probably not not too hard. You move it up to say, you know, seventy five percent of households difficulty is starting to creep up there. This is where we're thinking, uh, okay, it's you know it's going to get harder to push people to. And if we had every single household in London using the green bin, difficulty score of nine. So in other words. Not impossible, but probably highly unlikely just because people being people is gonna be very, very difficult to get every single person doing this. So oh, let's just set it at 75% uh, to, to be ambitious. One of the things you also notice over here, there's kind of a little bit of a, a running, running tally going on. And um, what I'm just gonna do here, just so you can um, kind of get to see, I'm just gonna set that for zero for now. So if you're starting off here with uh, composting, organic waste, you know, green bins, 75% of households, it's going to get us 10,000 tons. We got to reach a million. So we got a long way to go here. But overall plant difficulty, oh, that's, you know, that's not too bad. So then you'd move down to building retrofits. You're going to get, once again, some background information about building retrofits. Some background information about, you know, once again, what housing contribution is. So same sort of thing, a bunch of background questions to help us understand who's answering this. You will then go down to, you'll get a series of, in this case, starting off with single family homes. There's going to be a bunch of different questions where you're going to be essentially voting on what you think is your best guess for how many, in this case, single family homes do you think that we'll be able to have home energy re retrofits done over the next 10 years? So let's say, mm, okay, I'm gonna say 25%. Okay, so quarter of all the existing homes, that would get us around 50,000 tons a year. Uh, difficulty score overall, okay, four. All right, well, okay, let's maybe try to bump that up. Maybe if it was half, then you will see now, I don't know, basically roughly doubles. Difficulty score now is six, but now we're starting to see, okay, it's um, our plan starting to, you know, get complicated here because we've now chosen like two actions where we're expecting a lot of people to try to reduce emissions. So let's just say, drop that back down to 25 and essentially the slider will, will reset itself. There's 19 different questions or sliders in total that are here. 
Um, I'm not going to go through all 19 here. I'm going to leave that for you to do because essentially, think of this almost like a almost like a, a bit of a game in a sense that we've got to try to get at least a million tons in 10 years, but we've also got to try to find something where it's not too difficult or else we're going to run into a lot of resistance. So in the end, if you can go through this process and if you can reach or exceed a million tons and get it so you're basically on average five or under, kind of think of that as like you, you've solved the puzzle of how you, how you can reduce emissions. Now, after you go through the tool, if you haven't reached a million tons or you've, you, what you've picked, if it's over, if it's over, you know, difficulty five, don't worry about it. You can still submit your results. But if you want to go back in and let's say fine tune some of the answers and treat this like a puzzle to say, I want, I want to do this. I want to figure out how we could reduce our emissions by a million tons without it being too difficult. Feel free to go back and play around with it. So in the end, so after you've gone through all this, what do we at, at the city get? So this is where the folks at eDemocracy come into play. Because essentially the way their algorithm works is they look at how all everyone votes, you know, on the tool. Some people will say, I really like this action. Other people say, oh, you know what, I'm not going to, I think it's zero. I don't think anyone's going to do this. So they look at how the hundreds and hundreds of people will vote. And if they find that responses are all over the map, it's basically suggesting that not a lot of consensus is around, like this is, should be something that's at the top of the list. Whereas this group down here, you can see there's kind of like a bit of a consensus forming that everyone says, you know what? We all agree this is a good idea. So essentially the work that they'll be doing for us is looking at your responses and giving us something very similar to what they provided Salt Spring Island with, which is essentially, uh, in their case, they had about uh, just over 1,100 people um, participate in Salt Spring Island community of about 30,000 people. So very impressive results. Is We'll essentially get a similar report like this that looks at all the different actions we could take, you know, EVs, um, looking at freight emissions, retrofitting homes, and it, they'll be telling us generally what the level of support is uh, from all the people who voted and the, the level of effort or reduction supported. So this isn't to say that anything at the bottom of the list, that doesn't necessarily mean that we won't be doing this, but what this will let us know is that these actions are gonna be easy to sell people on. So this will be something where there's a lot, everyone says, yeah, for sure we should do this, whereas, when we look at doing stuff like this, that we're gonna run into a little bit more resistance here. But once again, it doesn't mean that we're not gonna do these things, but it just lets us know ahead of time where there's gonna be an easy sell, where it's gonna be a hard sell. So, and I know Perth County just north of us has also just gone through a similar exercise. So looking at the clock, it's eight o'clock on the button. Now, Leah, I know we started a, a bit late, but if we can keep people for a couple more minutes, I'm happy to answer questions. Awesome. Thanks, Jamie. Yeah. And I'm going to stop um, sharing my screen. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep an eye out um, for any questions that come through. Mm -hmm. um, what I'll do right now, though, is just quickly uh, present just so I can uh, share more details about the door prizes that we had mentioned. Um, so first, uh, before that, thanks to our speakers. Um, this pretend this is Katie. Uh, thanks, Katie and Sarah and Jamie. And um, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the door prizes now. Um, so these door prizes are available for those of you who um, attended this event live, um, completed the project neutral survey and added yourself to the group uh, with the green in the city code there. Um, and uh, completed the climate action plan simulator um, with the link that we uh, will email to you and it's also in the chat. Um, so each of these actions counts as one entry. Uh, we have some awesome door prizes like composters, rain gauges and rain barrels. Um, so we'll be drawing those prizes on March 5th and contacting winners by email. Um, just my last uh, couple wrap up items are um, that we do have an upcoming green in the city event on March 18th. 
Um, it's featuring author Ellen Kelsey and a local youth counselor, uh, Rimsha Ashraf. And um, the topic is Hope Matters, Tackling Eco-Anxiety and Inspiring Climate Action. So we'll send that link out to you, but also you can go on the website, uh, londonenvironment.net slash green underscore city if you'd like to uh, find the registration link there. Um, you can also visit our website for our e-newsletter. We will send out all upcoming environmental events to you via e-newsletter as well. Um, and I'll say a final thank you to our supporters of the London Environmental Network um, and all of you for coming out tonight. Um, I think we'll wrap it up there, but if 